So whose faction codex would you most like to see come next? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about codex releases and which ones the community would most like to see come next from Games Workshop. In 9th edition, Games Workshop do seem to have been falling into the trap of releasing codexes of ever-increasing power, with the latest Drakari and Admech ones being particularly rough examples. It means there's already a fair bit of power disparity between the codexes in 9th, let alone between the ones that came out in 8th edition, which are by and large really struggling to compete right now. With that in mind, I thought it'd be interesting to see which ones you think should be at the top of Games Workshop's priority list. So on a community post in the YouTube channel, I asked you exactly that question, got over a thousand responses, and in this video I thought we'd talk through the top four choices that you voted for codexes that are most in need of an update. Just before we start, I'd just like to say that this isn't going to include the next currently announced ones. We already know that Thousand Suns and Grey Knights are on their way. No confirmation of a date yet, but we do know their miniatures that are coming with them, Castellan Crow and the Infernal Master. And then in their Octarius preview, they basically all but told us that Black Templars are going to come next, completing the supplements for the core Codex Space Marines. So for the purposes of this, we're going to leave those ones out. Next, I do think that Games Workshop think of the Codex release cycle very differently to how the fans do, in that they don't really pay much attention to the game rules as any reason to update a Codex next. I think they tend to release the Codexes throughout an edition fairly randomly, and a lot more heavily driven by which models are being released, as opposed to which factions are struggling in-game at all and actually need an update to their rules. I think the new Admech and Sisters Codexes could be good examples of this. Both of those are armies that were absolutely doing fine before, very functional in 9th edition with their 8th edition codexes, yet both of those got revamped before certain other more needed dexes. I guess at least in 8th and 9th edition, at least your codex is guaranteed to be updated, which really wasn't the case in 7th edition or any editions previously. Other than actual votes for which codexes should come next, there were quite a lot of other common reactions, such as maybe give Chaos Marines two wounds first, that was a very common request, and in theory could be done fairly easily with an FAQ change. It seems Games Workshop have chosen not to go down this route, and basically only giving their Space Marine units their stat line buffs when their actual codex drops. It'd certainly be a massive power boost to the faction at the moment. I think quite a lot of their rules and synergies weren't really written with two wound Space Marines or three wound Terminators in mind, and you might get some crazy chaos combos coming out of it, but perhaps it still wouldn't be the worst thing ever, given the fairly ludicrous strength of armies like Drakari and Admech at the moment. Another common sentiment was that they should just release all the codexes at once, much like they did with the indexes at the start of 8th edition. It would certainly be better for a game balance point of view, but again I can absolutely see why Games Workshop don't do that. They want to keep the narrative of 40k evolving over the years, get people excited about the next release and get more sales because of it, and not just have an enormous deluge of content, maybe followed by an entire year of near enough nothing. I suspect they won't ever fully rewrite all the codexes in the game, unless they pull another hard reset like they did at the start of 8th. Finally, there were also a few requests for new armies, World Eaters, Emperor's Children, Traitor Guard and Dark Mechanicum being key amongst them. I'd certainly not be too surprised if we didn't see one or more of these throughout the edition, though again I'm sure there'd be a lot of sentiment the other way, saying don't release any new factions until you've at least updated the ones you've got. So if we actually get into the codexes themselves, these are all of the ones that didn't acquire enough votes to break into the top four choices. Top amongst all of these were the Craftworld Eldar, they got 7% of the votes, and certainly aren't a particularly strong faction in 9th edition, they've been struggling with a whole bunch of points nerfs and issues since the edition started, but have at least seen a little bit of success in tournament lists, quite often making a lot of use of their Forge World choices. I found it interesting that they didn't get all that many votes out of this list, particularly as we did a recent vote as to which faction most needed their models refreshing, and the Craftworld Eldar Aspect Warriors won that by a massive margin. In any case, it does look like at least one model might be coming for them. This rumour engine picture on the top right certainly looks very Eldar, maybe a control panel for a vehicle, or a fancy Eldar mine, perhaps. Second out of these other less voted factions were the Gene Stealer Colts, receiving 4% of the vote, and I think that certainly shows a bit of the popularity contest that is Warhammer, as Gene Stealer Colts are certainly one of the most struggling factions in the game right now, along with Tau, and could really use an overhaul to make their army more playable. Generally, Gene Stealer Colts just aren't played anywhere near as much as a lot of the other bigger armies. Their current range is fairly new, fairly expensive, and they maybe just don't feel like quite as much of a major player as some of the other factions. They usually have a feel of rebels on any one world, 
as opposed to a vast threat that conquers the galaxy. I certainly know that from my channel, whenever I make videos about gene stealer cults, they get around half the views or less than other videos, which does make me think that not all that many people tend to play them. In any case though, it looks like they could have something on the horizon. This is definitely a gene stealer cult holding a detonator of some kind, and it could be possible that they play into the Warzone Octarius narrative along with the Tyranids. Otherwise, receiving very few votes indeed are the Custodes, who are kind of doing fine at the moment for an 8th edition codex, though more non-Forge World options I'm sure will be appreciated. Imperial and Chaos Knights, again both struggling quite a lot in 9th edition, but also interesting that maybe people don't want to see them become quite so dominant again. I think people at large maybe see it a bit less vital that they do well as a faction, as they are a bit of a strange skew army to fight on the table. Chaos Demons, who have just seen the addition of Bellacore to their ranks, kind of mid-tier out of the 8th edition codexes. Bellacor should at least be a small boost to their faction strength. And then Inquisition, Harlequins and Inari. Inquisition and Inari kind of being borderline whether they're factions at all, and Harlequins remaining one of the stronger 8th edition codexes, despite a crazily limited unit pool. So let's move on into the top 4 then, and in 4th with 9% of the vote, we have the Astra Militarum, the Resolute Forces of the Imperial Guard. The Guard Codex started out in 8th edition in really strong style, along with Craft Worlds, and together they're now the two oldest codexes in the entire game, everything else has been updated or replaced. In early 8th edition they were very much top tier, huge conscript blobs at 3 points per model were scarily efficient, you could get cheap plasma spam everywhere, brutal firepower with tank commanders, and very viable entirely artillery parking lot lists. I think the Guard Codex might be one of the most FAQ'd and nerfed codexes in all of 8th and 9th, all manner of things have changed for them, and their FAQ document is incredibly long indeed, in particular things like infantry squads getting more expensive, bringing in the rule of three, all manner of different nerfs to conscripts, and just the general codex creep of every other faction in the game gradually catching up on them, has now landed them as a bit more of a mid to low tier army out of the 8th codexes. They certainly do have a fair few solid tricks, really solid artillery and full payload manticores, fast obsec infantry either with move 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 or tough chimeras, and deadly tank commanders with demolisher cannons that are really efficient at blasting through enemy armour, but despite this they're certainly not one of the tournament winning powerhouses of 9th. In terms of likelihood, it does seem that there's a fair few reasons to think that Guard might be coming quite soon. In the battle preview shots for this Warzone Octarius narrative, Guard and Scions featured in literally every single shot, and Games Workshop don't tend to publicise things quite so much unless there might be new releases coming for them soon. It's possible they might just get more formations and armies of renown and stuff, but at least most of the armies that were featured in Charidon got their own codex release as well, and we've also had a relatively decent amount of guard releases recently, the beautiful new Krieg models, Cadian's getting an extra upgrade sprue, and those new Gaunt's ghosts. Certainly seems to make things a bit more likely for the guard. Next up we have your third pick for armies to come next, and here we come to the Tyranids. Again, they were another at least reasonably early codex in 8th edition, had a very brief heyday once their Flyrants and Morlocks came out, I remember people were spamming absolutely loads of them, but then they caught some small points nerfs and the Rule of Three came into effect, and full on did Zilla spam didn't seem quite as strong anymore. In ninth, popular tactics have often been the Swarm Lord launching blobs of gene stealers at the enemy, double moving and advance and charge is a crazy powerful combo, some choices from the Imperial Armor Compendium, such as Dimecarons or Hyrodules, backed up with some cheap scoring rippers, and a bit of solid firepower with things like Hive Guard or Exocrines. Again, like Guard, despite these tricks, they do still remain kind of mid-tier out of the 8th edition codexes. They've had some success, but not really at the same level of things like Custodes or Harlequins. It's worth noting that Tyranids have also had very, very few model releases in recent years. I believe that their allocation of the share of releases might well have gone to the Gene Steel Court's army. Perhaps in a decision by Games Workshop, instead of releasing lots more Tyranid kits, we're going to build them up a small new allied faction. This still hasn't sat amazingly well with Tyranid collectors though, who I'm sure would like a fair few more new bugs. In terms of likelihood, Tyranids do seem like they could be a very good contender for a new release. The well-established law of the Octarius Sector is an endless fight between Orcs and the Tyranids of High Fleet Leviathan, and I think it really would be a missed opportunity if Tyranids didn't get a release somewhere in this narrative. The first Octarius book even has a Tyranid on the cover, and we've even got a few rumour engine pictures of Tyranid models coming, some long slender clawed appendages on the top right. I think it is quite likely that Tyranids will follow Black Templars as one of the next few codexes. Moving on, the second voted faction are the Tau Empire, 
really quite a big jump in the number of people voting for these. Tau came second with a massive 29% of the vote. Their 8th edition dex was consistently powerful since it was released, generally plenty of massive shooting firebases, things like riptides protected by swarms of shield drones, enormous numbers of broadsides hoovering enemies off the table, or even hammerhead spam with long strike. The change of the missions into 9th edition though really was kind of a disaster for Tau competitively. Rather than having usually 6 or 7 turns to achieve a mission, they now only had 5, and you had to be jumping forward to the midfield objectives right away, rather than spending several turns gunning the opponent down, and then going forward to score at the end. It's just conspired that the previous tower approach of sit back, delete the enemy, then move up to score the objectives that you've cleansed, just really isn't anywhere near as viable as it previously was. The tower and the Imperial Knights are just two of the armies that really don't get on with the 9th edition mission mechanics, on pretty much a fundamental level. It's not to say that a few people haven't had success with them though. A couple of the best Tau players have achieved a tournament placing or two with Farsight Enclaves lists, big squads of veteran crisis bodyguards, breaches in Devilfish, and perhaps a Riptide with the Amplified Ion Accelerator, all being some of Tau's more efficient choices. Still though, I'd certainly say that these are the exception, not the rule, and I suspect that the vast majority of Tau players have been absolutely desperate to see a codex ever since the edition dropped. As best I can tell, I don't think we have any clues of a new Tau Codex on the horizon yet. If Games Workshop are trying to unfold this progressive narrative thing, it seems unlikely they'll get one while the attention is focused away in the Octaria sector. If there is another campaign to follow that one, then maybe we'll see the attention return to them. However, if there was ever a Codex that might have deserved to be bumped up the Codex release schedule, Tau Empire certainly seemed like they could be that, particularly after they chose not to give them any sort of real buff in the recent chapter approved. Finally, and voted number one out of the codexes you'd most like to see Games Workshop release next are the Chaos Space Marines. They came first with a big 32% of the vote, very slightly edging out the Tau. In terms of codex functionality, I don't really think the Chaos actually have it too bad compared with at least some other armies. They did get a re-release halfway through 8th edition, and if you include the expanded options from their Traitor Legion supplement, the one that was re-released in the Book of Fire Warzone Charadon thing, they do actually have a fair amount of flexibility. In general, throughout 8th, Chaos Marines haven't tended to be a powerhouse codex, maybe going through their strongest phase when they just had their Lord Discordance released, and a bunch of shooty Forge World Dreadnoughts using the Purge. Despite this though, they have at least had a fair amount of success at tournaments in their time. Often, just by the way that Chaos Army lists work, they tend to work around putting lots and lots of buffs on really big scary units, with easy access to certain aura abilities, powerful psychic, and prayers from their Dark Apostles. It means that occasionally big units of noise marines, possessed, or other big threats can certainly punch above their weight, particularly when combined with veterans of the long war, or endless cacophony for shooting twice. Currently, the Chaos Marine builds that seem fairly strong are big units of Terminators with Lightning Claws, fielded under the Emperor's Children flag, where the points drop certainly made them a fair bit more appealing. Chaos often tends to function better as allied lists as well, cherry-picking the best bits from both the Chaos Marine Codex and the Demons one. In general, I'd say Chaos Marines are fairly mid-tier out of the codexes that haven't got a new 9th edition release. Certainly has a fair amount of potential, but perhaps one of the trickier ones to play. I think people just in general don't feel that this is a very fitting place for arguably the archetypical bad guys of 40k, particularly seeing as the loyalists have had quite such a long run of very, very strong codexes that tend to give them a significant leg up on the Chaos Marines every time they come into contact. In particular, I think this 2 wound and 3 wound thing a buff that we all know is coming for the Chaos Marines. It's just really frustrating to know that that is going to come at some point, yet it's still not there even a year after 9th edition has released, and for all we know, it could be another year until it turns up at all. I mean, odds are they will release it before then, but not knowing at all is pretty frustrating. Again, Chaos Marines don't seem to be very close on the horizon. To my knowledge, we don't really have any big hints that they'll be coming up anytime soon, either from the narrative or teased models. In any case though, I do agree with the community, it seems like one that they could have got out the door earlier rather than later. It does seem a bit strange that they released both Death Guard and Thousand Sons before updating the core Chaos Marine army. So let me know what you think. Do you agree? Are Tau and Chaos the most worthy recipients of a new codex right now? Or would you rather that go to someone else next? Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments. If you've enjoyed the discussion, feel free to subscribe to All Spets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep these videos coming regularly with new stuff for 40k coming pretty much every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos a lot on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics has a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below.
Channel patrons do get a fair few small rewards, seeing certain new videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next for the channel, and automatic entry to the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big bottle kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.